Hi, this is Katrina. Welcome to my studio and to my channel. Um, today it is one year since I put up my first light fastness test. So I'm going to give a review of the one year results. And quite conveniently, I also have the second lot of light fastness tests which went up at the end of March. So this is a six month review for the second set. So just a little bit of a recap of what I've done. Just checking that I can see everything on screen. So I swatched out all of the watercolor pigments that I had and I tried to do a mass tone stripe and a diluted stripe of each color and then cut those strips in half. One lot of strips were um, taped to a board which went in a northwest window here in Queensland in Australia, so I'm Southern Hemisphere. And the others I wrapped in paper and put in a drawer to try and protect them from light. So this way everything was consistent as as consistent as I could make it um, and I had you know it's been interesting to see how things change so let's have a quick look at what the final results are I haven't even done a preview of this myself normally I pull them out and have a bit of an idea of what I'm going to say so now the other difference you will notice, I'm just going to um, put these two pieces here. Let's, I'm going to try and lift this a little bit, maybe zoom down. I don't know if the camera's, oh, it looks like it has picked up a little bit. So this strip here is a strip that has been in the cupboard. This strip here is one that's been in the window. Now, I'm hoping it can pick up. There is a change in the color of the paper. The paper I have used is just an off-white. It wasn't bleached white. So, consequently, the paper that's been in the windows has now bleached white. So, I think that there is some subtle difference when I look at some colors because of the change in the paper tone. But we'll have a look and see how we've gone anyway. So this first strip of colors are Jackson's handmade watercolors. So the names and pigment numbers are below the color stripe. If cad yellows, possibly cad reds, probably not. So pyrroles, okay. PV19, see there may be a very subtle shift with PV19, but again, I'm not sure whether that's just to do with the paper, but the really obvious one on the first row is Opera Rose. And we can see just how much of a dramatic difference there is between our um, in the dark and in the window. We have lost all of that vibrant pink intensity. And that's because Opera Rose has a fluorescent dye component. So you can see that if you want to paint something and retain that beautiful bright pink that you see it's not a light fast because it's it's a fluorescent dye it will fade um, quin purple and permanent magenta pv19 as well i think that they all look again it's so hard to tell like you sort of go am i seeing a subtle difference here possibly would that make a difference over long term i'm not sure that it would um okay so cobalt violet i wouldn't expect it to fade 
the blues all look good ultramarines ceruleans thalos now the indigo now the indigo that jackson's make you mightn't think of indigo as being a light fast not light fast and genuine indigo pigment is not light fast but in this case it's made with pb15 which is a phthalo blue and a black pigment so i wouldn't actually expect that one to fade so greens can sometimes be a bit interesting because some of the yellow pigments that they mix with can sometimes fade and we'll see that with some of the other brands that i have later on um thalos our ochres generally are all good and again our earth browns yeah they're all good so no real problems so really it's just that opera pink that i have in that particular set so on to my St. Petersburg White Knights. Now these are all pan paints. Um, so let's see how these go. Okay, I am seeing a subtle difference in this Ruby PR170. Um, I should just quickly look up what PR170 is. Um, I've actually got Dr. Otto Carno's website open, so if I need some quick quick reference. So PR170 is a naphthol red. Um, so I can see just, I think that there is fading here, particularly in the... Um, more dilute sample to me there is there has been a bit of a loss the hue hasn't shifted greatly but i think that it has faded the magenta looks okay indian Thrain is beautiful cerulean and azure i would expect them to be good as well so our blues and greens, chromium oxides, they're good. Earth greens, ochres. Yes, they're all good as well. Okay, so on to my M. Graham paints. Now, when we talk about light fastness, um, it's not usually the brand that's the issue it's usually a characteristic of the pigments and or dyes that are used so don't just think that because it's an expensive brand it won't fade or won't change it's got more to do with the actual pigment now the reason why cheaper very cheap paints can fade in surprising ways is that there may be undisclosed dyes or pigments as part of that mixture and that's what's faded so the actual named pigment may be fine but there might be something else an additive that we don't know about so just bear that in mind so it doesn't mean that cheap paints are bad and expensive paints are good it's it really is an individual characteristic so M. Graham yellows are all lovely. The reds, Quinn rose. See, again, I can see an ever so subtle, um, and I really just wonder if it's just, there may be an ever, ever, ever so slight fading on the PV19, just, but I think it's that difference between the cream paper and the white paper that's giving, our eyes perceive colors differently depending on what colors are next to them so that's why i say it may be a paper issue but again it's so subtle that i don't think that i would be particularly concerned about it um, no problems with the blues again blues ochres earth colors they're lovely radio 
and this is a bit of a mixed bag so these um, so up to here these are art spectrum colors and again this PV19 I am thinking that my PV19s are showing subtle fading in Queensland Sun um, because that's been Jackson's and M. Graham and Art Spectrum. I'm seeing a shift. I think there has been a shift on the PV19. So I think that's something that I just need to be a little bit aware of. Um, it is one of my favourite pink pigments to use. Um, but I don't think the colour shift is dramatic enough in any of these cases for me to be very concerned about. But I think that I will keep that in mind as a, as a potential problematic um, pigment for my own personal areas. Oh, where are we? Yep. Okay, but all of the others are looking good. Now we come on to Schmincke. Now, this is one that I did expect to see fade. And this colour faded so quickly, it really did surprise me. Um, it really hasn't changed since its initial fade so we can see how dramatic this like particularly and this is what I find interesting it's the mass tone of the Prussian blue that is most obvious so here it is that beautiful rich deep blue and here that has completely disappeared um, the dilute version is not as obvious but you can see it's definitely a slightly cooler greener hue um, and so this is Schmincke this is a really well-known brand it's it's a good quality paint but it is a nature of the pigment now I am told there is some suggestion that you can put a faded Prussian blue in the cupboard and it will recover so after I finish this is my 12 months so I'm considering these tests as finished I'm going to put these swatches in the cupboard and revisit this and see whether or not my Prussian blue does actually recover in the dark so and then that's a neutral tint okay so these are my Daniel Smith paints I don't have a lot of Daniel Smith so we'll see how we go here so transparent yellow oxide, potter's pink, cobalt teal, moon glow. Definitely, moon glow has faded. So this is the PR 177 would have faded because on this side, which has been in the cupboard, I don't know if this will. I'll try and zoom into it for you because I think a lot of people will want to see this. This one is the Moon Glow. Now you can see there is a very distinct, in both the mass tone and the diluted, there is a distinct difference. The one that's been in the cupboard, you still have that beautiful reddish undertone. And in the sun, exposed to light, it has nearly, like it has faded out. It's... It's definitely something to consider. So I would say that Moon Glow is not a light fast pigment, unfortunately. Um, I do think it's a stunning color and I will still use it probably sparingly, although there is a Roman Smalls one that I use. There's a shadow violet color from Roman Smalls, which is not the same mixture as this, but I use in a lot of the same circumstances that I would use Moon Glow. Um, but I've done the test, I know now. <laughs> okay, so my Prima Tex, generally they're looking fine. Again, this Rhodonite, I wonder if Rhodonite has a PV19 in it. Because that's giving me similar vibes to my other PV19s that have, have shown some degree of fading. Anyway. And. The hematite's good. Then these are a couple of Sennelier colours. I only have two of them. So that's a grey and a quin gold. And they both look good. Now on to... Roman Schmalls. So these are my favourite paints, mostly because of their they're a combination of cost and and application. 
they've got a lovely range of excellent sort of range of colors wow and i have just seen something stunning here wow can you see what i've seen check this out Hansi yellow medium py74 that has faded significantly and there's even a slight shift in the mass tone this will be really really important for me to know because i do use Hansi yellow medium a lot particularly my roman small one so now that i know that i'm going to have to review what's in my standard palette um, unfortunately that's really critical to know and here we go I think there's also a shift in the permanent orange PO59 I think that's faded as well hmm transparent pyrrole orange I can see a shift there as well even pyrrole scarlet now anthroquinone red PR177 yes there's definitely been a shift there I expected that that's the same pigment that's in moon glow it is known to be non light fast so that one I expect PR264 no I think that that's okay there's possibly some problematic ones in smalls Roman small that's unfortunately I'm a little bit upset about that I'll have to maybe scan and I'll reassess all of them PR9 although here we go this PR19 I don't think shows any change so our violets are good so this is the one that I actually use a bit more than moon glow I know it's a different color because it's a different um, pigment mix but I'm usually using it just for that extra punch of shadow and darkness and so I find myself reaching for that it's a mixture of PG50 PB29 and PV19 so Indenthrin blues your ultramarines cobalts thalos they all look good I wouldn't actually expect any of them to to fade So we have an ocean blue, a cobalt blue, thalo green, an aqua green. Now that's the Aquarius green, is this one here. Then transparent gold ochre, which is has sort of replaced my um, yellow ochre as my favourite ochre. Yellow ochres, earth tones, as I expected, earth tones are all looking good. I would expect it and okay so this is the Roman Smalls version of the moon glow and you can see exactly the same thing the PG, PR177 the red tone has definitely faded you can see a distinct change in the color so unfortunately this PR177 pigment is just not light fast um, so I'm glad that even though I love the color I have switched it out of my main palette so I don't go reaching for it without thought right PR122 Potter's Pink yeah they're all they all ooh, Potter's Pink I can see a very subtle variation with the potter's pink but again I think that that's actually to do with the um, color of the paper um, I'm not yeah not sure but again it's so subtle that I'm not sure that it's actually of significance so that's okay now these ones you can see wow look at the fading on this now Kuritake's I didn't do a diluted stripe of these but wow check out this <laughs> and this is why we d we should consider doing light fastness tests I, I mean I did expect these to be 
a little less light fast but wow so the red see even the ones that are in the cupboard I actually think that these have faded somewhat even in the cupboard so we can see how much like that red and the deep rose have nearly faded completely away that cadmium scarlet again the red pigment has faded significantly even the lemon yellow shows I don't know maybe it's just the paper behind it because the greens are okay the ultramarine's okay the indigo is showing some degree it has faded a little but the others are okay so kurataki i've i would always consider them a good like they're a lovely paint but they're something that i would use if i was going to be doing journal work or work that's to be scanned and then stored in like in a folder or you know it basically not something that you're going to hang on your wall so well some interesting interesting results of that um i might have to try and take high-res scans and maybe put them up on my web website um, but those yellows that yellow from roman small is that's really shocked me a little bit so we'll have to look out for that in future right so that's the 12 months so these ones are six months okay so these ones are six months so again these are um, a similar orientation window but bear in mind the six months to date have been over autumn and winter in Australia so whereas that first lot because they've been through the summer sun these pigments still have not seen summer sun in australia yet and that's what will be interesting so the first one so these are only six months so the first lot are light fastness tests for white night tube paints so some of these are the same pigments and some are not so I'm just going to have a quick look. They generally look okay. Now this Carmine PR19, this is the one where we suspect that it's actually a PV19, not a PR19, because PR19 should be um, sensitive to light and should show fading this is not really showing any significant degree of fading so i think this is actually a pv19 but all of the rest the cerulean ultramarine emeralds which is a pg7 pg8s they're okay even actually even the pg8 pg8 is um can fade there may be ever so subtle fading but i'm not really seeing it to a great degree yet as i say will be interesting to see what happens to it over summer right earth pigments generally okay when that gold's holding up okay Radio. So these are the other room and schmoll. Um, okay, green gold. No, I think that they're okay. The perylene violet. Now, these are a very cheap set. So these are a, a Motmark brand. Um, these are, I think it was a $5 set of tubes so i don't expect these to be handled very well at all um, and generally they've chosen some very fugitive pigments but i mean your lemon yellow and your yellow ochre are okay there is definitely fading here on the vermilion the crimson is most definitely faded the violet has almost vanished inside six months now there is a bit of a shift on the Prussian blue, but I find it very interesting that this Prussian blue 
has not faded anywhere near as much or as fast as the Schmincke Prussian Blue. Absolutely gobsmacked by that and that's a phthalo green I wouldn't expect it to change. Now <laughs> this is and this is one of these great when it comes to mix so this sap green is a PY1 and a PG7. Now let's just put this so this one here is PG7 on its own this is the one that's been in the window and this is a PG7. So you can see nearly all of the PY1, which is a fugitive yellow, has disappeared already from that sap green. So not light fast at all. This is not... <laughs> I had some real problems with these paints. I can't really recommend them for anything other than... I don't know, wasting time. So my camera turned off before we could get through the gouache. Um, so these are a, sort of a fairly discounted brand of gouache. There's no pigment information on these, so I don't know exactly what pigments are in them. But we can see some fairly stunning results anyway. Um, the orange nearly disappeared completely in the... Um, a wash, significant fading in the mass tone, the crimson massive shift in the mass tone and nearly completely disappeared in a diluted wash. So the blues and the greens actually look okay um, and even the lemon looks okay which is somewhat surprising. Um, So the viridians, ochres, yep, they're all okay. And then the last ones were actually some oil pastels. So these are a um, Sakura Expressionist oil pastels. So I'll move them a little bit. Right here having limited experience with oil pastels so um, I'm going to have to test my galleries actually seeing some of these results so very minor fading in the red some noticeable fading in the orange I think the yellow has faded a little bit and possibly the yellow green now the purple has definitely faded um, even the cobalt blue no maybe not Pink maybe slightly, but this, what they call light orange, has definitely, definitely faded. And even the brown may have changed its tone just ever so slightly. But black and white, I wouldn't expect to have sea changes. So they're okay. Um, I hope that you found this interesting. Um, because I had to get interrupted, I have since jumped on to um, Kimberly Crick's site. I will link her YouTube and her website below. She has excellent resources on light, fartne light fastness for watercolours um, and her, her website and knowledge has been invaluable helping me set up my own tests and also seeing that the results that I'm getting particularly with the Roman Schmoll PY74 is consistent with her results so there's definitely um, problems there so um, I'm looking forward to putting all of this together and as I say I might try and slowly start to upload some of this onto my blog on my website to share the final results of the light fastness as I work through them I also might swatch out, well I do need to swatch out the new colours that I've bought and also I think I'll swatch out my oil pastels, all the different brands I have on them, seeing the significant fading that I'm getting in the Sakuras. Um, I do love using oil pastels, I am aware that they're possibly not one of the most light fast medium 
but again it's to do with pigment rather than the medium itself so I am going to look forward to seeing what sort of results I might get with that um, I would love to hear your experiences and your thoughts about some of these results um, were there results that were surprising to you um, or maybe even suggestions of things you wouldn't mind seeing tested um, I will be setting up a new run of tests in the very near future um, probably in the next couple of days but do let me know if there's something that you'd love to see and I might see whether or not I can accommodate that anyway thank you very much for joining me and we will chat next time don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and I'm always happy to chat. See you later. Bye.